Hey guys, welcome back. Well, a friend of mine bought a uh, gas-powered air compressor that uh, service trucks use. Picked it up at a yard sale for uh, just like 100, 200 bucks, something like that. Anyway, um, it had the belt off of the engine, and uh, you know they said that the engine didn't run very well, and it had a 15.5 uh, uh, horsepower Kohler on it. Or no, it's a 12.5, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, he brought over me to have a look at it, and we pulled the motor off of it, and uh, I started it up on the bench, and uh, it would run. But if you looked at the dipstick, the dipstick was popping in and out of the uh, oil tube. And I'm like, that's not good because we're getting compression down into the block. Um, normally, that's a blown head gasket. Well, in this case, it's a blown head gasket and a warped head. I mean, this is a pretty old engine. And uh, this is the original head gasket. And as you can see, it's pretty well shot. And uh, the reason why it was uh, messed up and warped is because somebody way over torqued the head. Um, a couple of the head bolts were so tight I had to take a half inch impact to pull them out. I mean, they just wouldn't move. Well, anyway, um, I took my straight edge and my caliper and uh, I checked the head and found out that it's got a 1.28 millimeter warp in it between the combustion chamber and the valve area. Uh, it's right in here where it's warped and it's got all this old gasket material that's on this head and uh, the same thing on the uh, block at the top of the cylinder. It's got this nasty stuff uh, stuck to it. So I'm going to have to clean all that off. And a uh, long time ago an old man showed me how to mill a head at home for just a couple of dollars instead of taking it in and getting a machine or replacing the heads on these small engines and I'm going to pass that on to you. Um, what I do is I take me a straight edge and I check across the head several positions and I look where the straight edge meets the head and I look at the look and make sure there's no gaps which like I said this in here has a gap here and uh, you know, I use a couple of different straight edges just to make sure, you know, measure twice, cut once. And uh, I found the warped area. But then I use a uh, flat surface, a machine surface, preferably. You want uh, thick metal that's flat. And you also want to check it and make sure there's no warps or anything in the surface that you're going to use. Now, the old guy that showed me this, he used a uh, 2x6. But, of course, he checked the 2x6 and made sure that it was flat and it wasn't completely flat. So we run it through a planer a couple of times and planed the surface and milled the surface of that wood to make sure it was flat. And then he glued his sandpaper to the wood, another block of wood on top of it, and uh, let it sit. And, you know, he had several of those he had set up. Well, what I do is I just take my sandpaper, and this is 120 grit. Uh, if it's really bad, you can go 80, 120 you know, start out with 80 grit and then go down to 120. But uh, I like stopping at 120 because it leaves a nice little crosshatch pattern on this. And it helps to kind of hold the gasket on there a little bit better. I just think it gets a better seat. Now what you want to do, you don't want to push down on this. Yeah, here you go. You can even see the warp in that head. I mean, you can see it's rocking. Anyway, uh, you don't want to push down on it, just let the weight of the head set there and push it forward. Give it a quarter turn. And just keep going and giving it quarter turns. And after you go through a full rotation, have a look. And you can see it's already starting to mill this outer edge on this surface to get it flat again. You just keep going through, rotating a quarter turn every time. And you got to be patient because it takes a little while to do it this way, but it does save you money from going to a machine shop and it saves you from having to uh, 
wait, you know, a few days to a week to get your cylinder heads back and, you know, all that. And, like I said, you can see it's starting to mill this edge back down. But it does take a while to do this. It's not a race. And the more time that you spend doing this and making sure it's right, the better the job it's going to be. And as you can see, it's starting to mill this down. And it's just now starting to get into the warp. But there you go. That's how I uh, machine or mill these cylinder heads at the house without having to send them off to a machine shop or anything like that or spending a whole bunch of money doing it.